Hey everyone, Dana here. This is one of my favorite shirts. I really love this top at the moment. However, I definitely would not have been able to wear this shirt to the high school that I went to because of the dress code that we had at my high school. But I think the worst part of that dress code was the reason that they gave us girls for why we weren't allowed to wear shirts like this to high school. I'll get to that a little bit more in a moment. But first, when I traveled around Germany interviewing people for this series, I asked a lot of them if they had a dress code at their high school. Here are some of those answers now. Did you have a dress code in your high school? Uh, we did not. Nope. No, we did not have any dress codes. No. 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 Not really? Yes, kind of. My school was British influenced, so I had uniforms. <laughs> a dress code? No. No, no, no. Our school didn't. No. There were some things we were not supposed to wear or our teachers would scold us for it, but there was no dress code. Yes, I went to your typical American public high school from kindergarten to ninth grade and there was a very strict dress code. I think at one point our teacher, when we all started to grow up and become um, adults, some of the girls were wearing really, really deep cut um, outfits and the teacher was like, just think about if you want to be seen as a girl wearing a low cut shirt like that. Um, but. I think there weren't uh, official guidelines for that. The skirts needs to be down, the, like, you know, the knees. You can't put it up. And always two plaits. Now showing your, yeah, of course, yeah, like the basic things to be always pinned up. Couldn't wear hats, couldn't show it really any skin, couldn't wear tank tops, couldn't wear capri pants, but we could wear skirts that were to the fingertips. I think it also was in the school rules, like we weren't allowed to wear um, like spaghetti tops and um, skirts or shorts that were too short. Yeah, but it wasn't spelled out so that you knew, okay, like that one is okay and that one isn't. So it was often just like what the teachers thought was right or not. But I can remember that a girl was once told uh, to leave the classroom and to dress properly. So it happened, but not that often. So no dress code. No dress code. You could wear anything you wanted. Uh, you could wear everything you want or anything you want until uh, a certain point. Well, it depends. So if you were a white German girl with good grades, you know, it was just accepted. Now, if you were a Turkish girl uh, with, let's say, average grades who also had problems in school, they used your looks to just show everyone that that's why you're, you're not okay. So you're a slut or uh, you're, you know, just not a good person so they tried to actually define girls uh, um, according on their looks but just in cases where it was convenient. We didn't have a dress code especially not about the length of skirts or shorts obviously sometimes they would say something if the, the if short skirts were like really really short maybe the teacher would say something if, if a girl was wearing a super short skirt and like a basically just a bandeau top but it never really happened to me, no. They didn't really want us to wear brands, like really noticeable name brands, but just because we had some cases of bullying because of that, because kids couldn't afford brand, uh, brand clothes. But there wasn't really a dress code that was more like recommended that parents didn't buy anything with a massive logo on top, uh, on, on it. And that was for men and women, boys Yeah, yeah. Boys. probably more boys because the boy clothes have had more noticeable logos. And I remember when I was like in the seventh or eighth grade and the boys were starting to get a bit of peach fuzz on their upper lips that had to be shaved off immediately uh, because no facial hair allowed. So it sounds like th there was a dress code for girls and also a dress code for boys. Yes, definitely. Um, but somehow the dress code for girls seemed a little bit more pushed or a little bit more important to the school. After that, I told them about the dress code that I had at my high school, and now I'm gonna tell you about it as well. I went to, I would say, a pretty typical high school. It was a public high school in South Florida, and we had a dress code. Not uniforms. You could wear, you know, just like your normal clothes. It wasn't a uniform. 
but there was a dress code. Some of the dress code for girls included no spaghetti straps, no belly shirts, no low cut tops, two short skirts or shorts, and then also just generally, nobody was allowed to wear baseball caps or hats. You couldn't have shirts that had swear words on them. And boys were also not allowed to have their boxers coming up out of their pants or their shorts. And before high school began, during the summer, we did get information in the mail about the dress code. Then school began, and at some point within the first few weeks of the school year, they took all the new incoming ninth grade girls, they took us out of class. We then went into an assembly room to be told again about the dress code and to be told why there was this dress code. The reason why that they gave us was because if we wore those kinds of clothes, then the boys might not be able to concentrate. That if we wore those things, it might negatively affect the boys' education. That they might not be able to concentrate on school and yeah, that that wasn't fair to them, basically. They really did. They took us girls aside and they told us, I'm not smiling because it's funny, I'm smiling because it's, awful, you know? <laughs> like, when it happened at the time, I was 14, and I didn't really think anything of it. It's just how things were. Those were the administrators standing up there, the adults standing up there telling us that, yeah, the reason you can't wear this is because then the boys can't concentrate, and that's why we have this dress code in place. And for me, that was just normal. It's only looking back on it now that I'm like, whoa, that sends some incredibly messed up messages to the girls and also to the boys. Okay, so what happened if a girl did wear something that was not in line with the dress code? The teachers and the administrators, they, it felt like they were really like watching to find girls who were wearing the wrong thing, you know? And so if I had worn this, that was just like so obviously breaking the dress code, I would have been immediately caught and sent to the office. So again, I would have missed class. I would have had to call home and tell my parents. If my parents could leave work or if they were at home or whatever and they could come and bring me a new shirt, then they were supposed to do that. If they couldn't or if that would take too long and, you know, I needed to go back to class, I would have had to take off my shirt and give it to the people at the office and they would have given me a really big like gym shirt, usually really ugly gray one, you know, and I would then have to wear that the rest of the day so that walking around the school, everyone who saw me knew that I had broken the dress code. I don't know, it was kind of like scarlet letter type of thing, you know, that now everyone who saw me knew, ooh, she must have worn something inappropriate, like that she's not a good girl, you know? She's wearing that gym shirt. We all know what that means. And yeah, it just really had this feeling to it of that like, good girls don't wear shirts like that. And yeah, I told this experience to some of the people that I talked to for this video series, and let's see what some of them had to say now. That's awful. <laughs> okay. What do you think about that? Is it so <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, crazy. It sounds a bit odd to me that, you know, your, your presence has a supposed effect on the boy's behavior and, you know, that, there are some precautions taken so that the boys are comfortable with the way that you look. It should be more about what you feel comfortable looking like and not what this, what the effect of other people may be. What's befremdlich in English? Um, yeah, I actually, I've heard this before and until recently it was like, oh my God, the US are so bad. It's so much worse there. Now, uh, just a few months ago, I think half a year ago, there was this case in Germany, in Bavaria, where um, the um, director of the school, yeah, it's the director of the school, um, he had like 
XL shirts for the girls where he thought um, they weren't dressed correctly and the boys wouldn't be that focused with them being half naked in the room. So we see the same development here actually. It's one sign where we, how we see that the patriarchy <laughs> it's getting stronger. Yeah, for me it's very typical I'd say because girls and women are always expected to behave themselves in order not to disturb men. And also I mean What I think is strange, this idea that boys and men are so, you know, not able to concentrate when women are dressed in a certain way, then, I mean, it's also strange because um, the picture I have of men is a little bit more positive, I'd say. So it's really bad for both. Men and boys are considered to be really, you know, horny all the time. And girls and women are considered to be, um, yeah, in charge of, yeah, I don't know, keeping keeping calm and uh, not not disturbing anybody. And once again, yeah, the male is considered to be the norm, you know. So I mean, boys can basically wear whatever they want. I mean, maybe not baseball caps, but it's not because somebody thinks it it will disturb the girls. But girls, they just have to keep an eye out for the boys and what they could do or not do. And that's really, really strange, I have to say. Yeah. But it's typical. Did they have a conversation with you about that in India, saying, like, it's you can't wear this because of the boys? Or? Yeah, it was mostly because of the boys and also how you sit. You were not supposed to cross your legs because that is disrespectful. You are not supposed to widen it up. You know why. And then you can't. you have to sit, like, two legs to closer. That was the rule set at home at school. I used to always like crossing and oh my god my uncles and all used to make a huge mess of it. Oh she has no respect for elders. I'm like dude I just like to sit like this. And I remember once one of my aunts said I was wearing a small skirt at home. Why are you wearing this? Do you know there are men at home? I was like my question. I was 16. I asked But these are men whom I know. Yeah, but they are men. That means I was now looking back. Oh my God, these were the men who I'm, I mean, my family and my family aunts were saying, don't believe them. We have these challenges. And for me, it was like crossing legs was always good. But in India, it's still disrespectful at home. Things have changed now. I fight a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I am going to sit like this. Were you given a reason for the dress code or was it just there's a dress code and that's how it is? Um, I mean, I'm from a really conservative small town. There's a lot of baggage that comes a lot with living in a small town. No one ever really gave a reason, but it was just like, you know, you're a, you be a good, you be a good girl. Like that, I just always felt like that was kind of like the thing that I had in the back of my mind as a kid. Like, be a good girl. Don't have sex before marriage. Don't have a kid before marriage. Um, you know, these are just themes that were... I, I, when I think back on that time, I thought about that all the time. Like, don't be bad. Be a good girl. What does that even mean? I think that's just the same stupid logic that tells you don't go out late at night alone. Don't wear short clothes because then you will get raped or then something bad will happen to you because it's your fault if the boys can't concentrate. You're the bad one here. Like, it's always that, yeah... Women's bodies are the problem here, so you have to change something to make the situation better or to make yeah <laughs> the situation better for the boys at school because you're making it horrible by wearing short skirts. And yeah, the problem definitely is you in this situation. Yeah, that, that's just stupid. What about taking the boys out to an assembly and telling them, like... I don't know, whatever is a appropriate thing to tell them, but that a girl can wear whatever she wants to wear and that they have to find some other way of like coping with that and um, still being able to concentrate. So I think for girls, especially it's uh, like dressing yourself and putting lots of thought into how you look and to feel comfortable is uh, a form of self-expression just as makeup in my exp in my opinion. I think makeup for me is uh, not about pleasing others. It's more like for me to feel comfortable. Just um, like for example, I almost always have, uh, have on some makeup on my skin just 
so I feel comfortable. Yeah, I think it's the same with uh, fashion. I had this conversation, I remember at 17, in India, we call lungi. You can Google about it. It's called lungi. And it's only in South India. So it's like a wrapper on for men. Okay? And they used to lift that wrapper on and tie it. And that becomes half, literally half skirt. And then they used to sit like this and this. And you know, you could see sometimes a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then I remember I telling to one of my uncle, Oh my God, you have great legs. <laughs> And then my mom just pulled me from there to the room and like, what did you say? I think he works out. His legs is good. <laughs> and I'm, you're not supposed to, but come on, he is wearing a lungi and showing it off and I can't sit in my skirt. Like, I remember having this fight, huge fight, but I got, I got it right and left from my mom since then. So you can Google about lungi. So my question for you is, did you have a dress code at your school? And if so, were you given like an explicit reason for why there was this dress code? How was this handled where you live? And what are your thoughts on this? please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and a really big thank you so much to all the incredible women who joined me in this video. Links and more information to them down in the description box below. Please go check them out. They're so awesome and they're all doing some really, really awesome things. So yeah, all that information down in the description box below. You can follow me also over on Instagram where I'm going to be sharing more information about the women that I talk to in this series. So you don't wanna miss that. Follow me over there at Wanted Adventure. Also a really, really, really big thank you so much to our patrons who support us on Patreon and help make these videos possible. Thank you so much. For your support. And this video is also part of a larger video series. Don't forget about that. You can check out the playlist and check out more of the videos in the Being a Woman series right over there. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen!